Good evening. Welcome to welcome to uh, the Inland Wetlands and Conservation Commission a public meeting. Today is Wednesday, August 18th, 2021. It is uh, just after 7.30, 7.42. And we are uh, holding our virtual meeting in accordance with the governor's executive order. Um, this time of our meeting is the public comment. And seeing none, uh, we're gonna be moving on to our public meeting. Application number 738-21, Eric Sullivan, 51 Spruce Street. Parcel number 179-059. This is an application to restore regulated wetland and flood area. Um, Mr. Sullivan is uh, president. If he could uh, address the commission, introduce himself and please present his uh, application. Yeah, this is Eric Sullivan uh, from uh, 51 Spruce Street, Wethersfield. <clears throat> and uh, after the uh, last meeting, we I have uh, in front of me a uh, suggestion of how to uh, mitigate the uh, affected wetlands about uh, restoring a section of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, from uh, Derek Greger. And I, I agree with it. Uh, I don't know, you must have it in front of you. Um, so I was thinking, is it, you know, we actually came up with a plan of going lengthwise in the rear mm -hmm. on the other side of the waterway. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the north side, and to you know, for the uh, allotted uh, the amount that was written here in this memo, uh, like one and a half times uh, equals uh, 390 square feet. So yeah. I'm I'm I go along with that. And it, as far as what was on the south side, that grass, I it came in on its own. I haven't even uh, it just naturally everything grows well back there. So uh, I. Just the other day, threw some grass seed down, but it was kind of filling in on its own. I actually have pictures that I, I was going to email you uh, today, and I forgot to do it. But mm -hmm. to show what it looks like as of today, I could still send those. Okay. Um, I, I, I see the, uh, the planting schedule, and I see the proposed area in front of me. Um, who did... did Whoever selected the, the plant schedule, the plants that are proposed, did you have someone draw that up or that's all by town staff? That was given to me um, from the town. There's three different plants. I actually, yeah. one of them, uh, the Arrowhead, I actually have growing back there already. There's a few of them. Uh, mm -hmm. So I... I looked up, I went online and I looked up what all these plants are, you know, the common mm -hmm. names like dogwood and things like that, but, um, and where to buy them. And the planting schedule is actually uh, September, you know, like at, after August, you know, mm -hmm. after the heat is dissipated. So, mm -hmm. you know, I could purchase those uh, from Lowe's or anybody around here. And, uh, you know, I'll plant them and, I have access to, to water them and, you know, make sure they grow well, but that, that, like I said, that area grows well on its own, but I would make sure that it, you know, if you come by and check them out, they're not going to be all dried up. Yeah. You know? Okay. So I, I guess my understanding is that the, yeah. the, the plants that are proposed are or suggested are from the town uh, engineering department. Right. Okay. So it, the, the, it, we at least had somebody with the knowledge of the, of the material going back in. It wasn't an outside source, but it was at least somebody from the town who has now a knowledge of what plants should be planted there. Yeah, they're all local. Like I said, when I Googled, you know, not Googled, when I went online and looked them all up, they're all, you know, uh, Connecticut uh, mm -hmm. type plants. And like I said, I, I've seen them in my backyard already. So I, I know what they, what mm -hmm. they need to be. Okay. And, 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 and you have seen, um, Derek's comments. Uh, you read. You read yes. through them. You, you mentioned them. Okay. Yes, it was uh, dated August thirteenth. I've yep. got it right in front of me. Yep. Yeah. Now we'll, we'll, you'll be doing the work yourself. Yes. Okay. 
Typically with mitigation, we, we, we usually ask for more than the area that was disturbed for the applicant to give up more. Um, yeah, kind I of see that. It says one to one. You know, one to, right. one to one is kind of lean if you, if, if you ask me, but uh, I'm not sure if any of the other commission has any comments to make. I don't know if Mr. Ambrose or Mr. Owens, you know, have, have anything, any comments to make or questions well, to ask? Well, th Derek has said one and a half times. So instead of the 260, it would be 390. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean, square feet. I made a suggestion to the commission of um, one and a half to one, which is about the 390 square feet or larger. Um, you know, just for the commission's benefit, the, the initial plan I had sent to Mr. Sullivan, um, July 20th, July 29th, which you don't have, um, was suggesting he look at or consider restoring the full area on the north side of the drainage channel as wetlands and keeping what's what's been disturbed on the south side as lawn area. Um, mostly because that, based on visual inspection, based on all the wetland limits that we actually have, is, is likely what is wetland soil, had been wetlands at one time. I think last meeting he indicated that when he purchased the property, it was cleared even further back, uh, maybe by the developer or the builder of the uh, property. Um, so that was my initial suggestion was to, you know, just let's, let's keep everything on the south side lawn, everything on the north side and let it return to wetlands. Um, he, he felt more comfortable with trying to keep the area a little bit smaller. Um, maybe he could speak to, you know, the reasons why he'd like to keep more grass on the north side of the channel um, and not allow it all wetlands. But that was the initial proposal um, when he came back and said that, you know, he'd like to do less. Then I came back with, you know, I recommend the one and a half to one ratio, which is shown on the plan um, or larger, depending on what the you know commission would like to do. Um, you know, it's in my experience, it's typical with these types of situations uh, where there's an impact to a wetland that the mitigation ratios, you know, 1.5 to one is usually the minimum. Sometimes it's two to one or higher. Um, so I'll leave that up to the commission as far as you know, what you want to require in this instance. That was my recommendation. Could, could I just clear, get clarification here a bit, if you wouldn't mind? I'm, I'm looking at a color map that has some gray boxes on it. It looks like it's page 16 of your uh, the package that you sent us. Mm -hmm. And if I'm looking at it, there's a, a green strip that would be on the north side, uh, kind of angles down, comes to a point. That's what, 260 square feet? That's what he was proposing, but we want to go more than that in the same location. Yeah, we could work out. Yeah, that was just a general sketch. Um, mm -hmm. I had indicated to Mr. Sullivan that we could, you know, work that out in the field with him. You know, the actual limits, whatever you'd like to see. It's a little hard on these sketches because this is not, you know, survey plan. This is just aerial photos. That was showing a one-to-one -one ratio on that plan at that mm -hmm. time. Um, although I, I would recommend a, a higher. Um, mitigation area, right. which is standard. Right. Okay. The other question in your memo, he's supposed to be doing this by September 10th. Is that what we're discussing here? Or are we? And that was originally set at the last, um, at the last meeting. I, you know, I think it's still reasonable. Maybe like he said, some of the wetlands plantings, the plants themselves um, do better in September. So we could, you know, extend that a bit too. Um, since we're into another month now with the next meeting that we post pushed this off to. Thank you. Any other comments? Does any commissioner have any other comments for Mr. Sullivan? I do. I have a question about um what the previous vegetation was, because as I see it, and I drove by there today, there's an awful lot of Phragmites out there that's invasive. And so I'm wondering the success rate that they, we might get with planting out there, because um, that's a pretty aggressive uh, thicket <laughs> out there. 
-hmm. right now. And, and I, I had read that there were cattails um, in the lawn area that were removed. And so I just wonder if it was cattails or if it was phragmites. Actually, I, I was using the word for, uh, cattail uh, probably incorrectly because I they are similar to them, but they don't actually have the cattails. I, mm -hmm. I didn't know what that name of that plant is that's yeah, 10 the, feet tall. Yeah. The, I, I, I suspected it was more of the same from the other side of the ditch. Yeah, it's the same up and down the street, that same mm -hmm. plant. It's like all over Weathersfield. Yeah. yeah. So it's not, I, do you, what is, uh, could you tell me what the name of that plant is? Um, I, I couldn't find the, it. The common name I think is called elephant grass. It's called, oh, really? it's called Phragmites. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And it yeah, takes... there's an area where I, I, I stopped mowing back there and they're mm -hmm. already coming back. I don't know if you even probably saw them today if you, if you went by there. Mm -hmm. They come back pretty quick. But like I said, if I have to plant these other plants, you know, I'll do that also. Whatever works. It was mainly that what you see that tall back was it Phragmites? That's what it's called. That, yeah. That's mainly what grows out there. You know, there's other stuff mixed in, but that's the most uh, invasive one uh, in that area. Mm -hmm. it, you see it all over by Desopo and everywhere. That's that's what I cut down uh, when, on the by the fence over there. That's the only thing that was growing there at that spot. That makes sense to me. Uh, one other question. Um, as I recall, it, was, it wasn't just you, Mr. Sullivan, that cut this down. A lot of this stuff went out, was cut down by the developer originally? Oh, they went probably almost up to where the uh, electric, uh, the easement is for the electric lines, the poles yeah. are out back. They had well, that was all like, yeah, when, when they built, when they built that street, the street didn't exist before. And, and they raised up the land around there so they could build housing and they cleared you know way back and i just let it grow back because i didn't want to deal with it it was all you know it's all wet and marshy so i just did a certain amount and said oh that's good enough and i i stopped and i i mean that was 25 years ago okay so basically you you let the stuff yeah. grow back it's there now yeah mm -hmm. right thanks Does any other commissioner have any comments to make or questions for Mr. Sullivan? I guess, uh, Dave Ambrose, I, I would just uh, say I go along with the, uh, with the engineer's recommendation of the 1.5 ratio. Okay. And just to clarify, I mean, I'm on, not married to the planting list if, if there's other suggestions. Um, I'm not a soil scientist and, uh, and not a landscape architect either. Uh, I went back to some other plan approvals the commission had made in previous years on different projects um, for a similar situation where there was wetland mitigation. And there were a number of different plantings that were put in. These were a few of them I chose um, to Ms. Calabrese's point. You know, maybe they aren't gonna take very well with the Phragmites out there. You know, that's not my area of expertise, but so if anyone has any suggestions on um, on thoughts on how to handle that. Um, you know, one thing I know, Mr. I know Mr. Sullivan has indicated that, uh, just stop mowing and all this tends to grow right back. Um, you know, maybe if he was, I'm just gonna throw out a suggestion. Maybe if he was willing to allow more area just to grow back naturally, maybe we could reduce the amount of plantings or eliminate them if they may not take well anyway and save him that expense. Um, if he's willing to give up you know, uh, or restore more or allow more wetland area to come back that previously existed. I think no matter what you plant, you're going to, you're going to end up with the natural plants coming back anyway. So right. unless, unless we remove the invasive or you multiple applications with a licensed applicator of a herbicide. I mean, this is, you have to remove it by the root. I mean, you're, this is, 
the success of those plants over time is, is going to be very difficult. Right. From my perspective, I think the primary concern is stabilizing the soil. Mm -hmm. The, in, in that case, the, the soil is already, uh, you know, it's got vegetation on it already, just from the, a month. It grows back really fast. So if there's no uh, silt or anything like that getting into the stream. It, then actually, I, we remove silt from the stream to fill in the low spot on the lawn side. Um, and that's already started having its own grass just naturally growing back, uh, mixed in with the, with the lawn, you know, on its own. So there's nothing going to get into the waterway. If we, if, when we go out to the, you know, physically go out there and look at it, it is you can see what's going on a lot clearer. Did you walk in the backyard, or you just looked from the street? Oh, I just oh. Drove, I just looked down the from the street. Oh, okay. As a as a commission, are we okay with the one to you know one point five ratio, or, or are we looking for a little bit more? Um, of an area to restore, or, or are we looking? What's the area? Let's let's discuss the area. Is one point five sufficient for us? The one point five is fine with me. Okay. I agree so with do you we, on that. You're okay with that, Mr. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this so, is Clark. I agree. That works for me too. Okay. So do we have a motion to approve? Sure, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll move that we approve application number 738-21, Eric Sullivan, 51 Spruce Street, parcel number 179-059. And the application is to restore the regulated wetland and floodplain areas uh, on a condition he restores at least to the 390 square feet uh, suggested by the engineer. And right now with the plantings recommended by the engineer. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner Owen. Do we have a second? I'll second that, Brian. Commissioner Ambrose, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nails? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. I right, thank you for your time. Well, moving on, um, Conservation Commi Commission business. Uh, I guess we, we don't have any. So general business um, will be the approval of our minutes last week. And then we'll take a minute to go through them if, if any changes. Do we have a motion to approve? That was Brent Owen. It looks very thorough to me. I'll move to approve it. Do we have a second? No second, huh? This is Clark. I wasn't present at the meeting. I, I can't vote or second those minutes, can I? 
No, I don't believe so. No, I don't think uh, so. Thought so. I, um, well, Dick, I, I would. Well, Derek, I'll, I'll second it. Okay. Thank you, Mary. All in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. Uh, staff update, Derek, on the uh, erosion control disturbance. Um, yes. So, uh, for the benefit of Ms. Calabrese, who wasn't here last month, just briefly, um, in the spring, we had a uh, resident in town um, attend a meeting. He had some concerns about some work that had been done on the uh, adjacent property to him, um, where the applicant had re redone his backyard. He turned over all the soil, reseeded. Um, with doing that, he didn't put in any erosion controls. The erosion had washed onto his property. And, um, you know, the owner of the other property refused to remove it. Um, this did not come before the commission because it was less than a half acre of disturbance. That is our threshold, um, our, our minimum, or I should say, what we have, what our minimum we have to um, regulate through the state statute. So it didn't come through in the wetlands. It was a type of project that wouldn't require any building department permits or anything else. And um, his um, his suggestion was that the commission look at, is there any way to have some authority to enforce um, someone in that situation that's causing an erosion problem onto a budding property to address it? Um, so we had done some research. Uh, one of the commissioners that had recently resigned um, had made some suggestions about um, maybe looking at changing our property maintenance ordinance and having the zoning enforcement officer, the property maintenance officer, who's the same person, um, take on the added responsibility of being able to treat that as a um, uh, property maintenance issue and have some enforcement with that. They, he has the ability to issue fines um, beyond what we can do as the Inland Wetlands Commission. And um, that was that was the thought. We were, there's also some thoughts about bringing some drainage issues into it. We we do from time to time have people who redirect stormwater runoff onto abutting properties, and then those people, you know, are upset that they're allowed to do that. Generally, in both instances, with the erosion issues when they come up or drainage issues, I, I as the town engineer, as a courtesy, will often send a letter to whoever's doing that, indicating that you know they're causing a problem and they should address it to avoid creating problems in, on other in neighboring um, parcels. Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't, but it's more of a, we don't, I don't really have the authority even, and as the engineer or as the acting in the wetlands agent to force them to do anything. Um, so with that, the last commission, uh, the last meeting, the commission discussed it. Um, they were in, in favor of pursuing that option to see if that's possible. Um, so at this point, just to give an update, I have spoken with the town manager about it. Um, that's something he's currently considering. Um, there's a couple of things that we need to take into consideration. One is our, our, our staffing is limited, um, which is one of the reasons why we, you know, and I stated this at a previous meeting, I don't feel we can, you know, adequately handle lowering the threshold from 0.5 acres to something, you know, smaller that would include a lot of that type of work, just because it's very hard for us to manage what we have going on now, aside from adding that additional work. Unfortunately, the same thing uh, falls into the property maintenance officer. He's um, also does zoning enforcement. And he's very busy. And he's one person. Um, so this, these types of situations as they stand now are more civil matters between two property owners, similar to if someone puts a fence up, we don't permit it. If it goes on to somebody else's property, then that's an issue between the two of them that they need to work out, whether that involves uh, legal action or it's something they can work out these still fall under that type of category. Um, so he wanted to give it some more thought as far as number one, can he, does he want to take on that added um, responsibility for um, staff members that are already overwhelmed? And um, also secondly, what, you know, just from the perspective of, you know, over-regulating, you know, we as a municipality have things that we are required to regulate. Um, so he just wants to be careful. We don't overstep our bounds too much and really, um, create a situation where we think this type of thing happens, you know, two, three, five times a year, you know, maybe it happens a lot more and people don't get, get us involved because it really doesn't involve the town. And that may, you know, that may explode into a lot of, um, you know, a lot of additional work and a lot of additional regulation that maybe we don't want to go down that road. So I think you might talk with the town attorney and uh, give that some more consideration. So I hope to come back to you at a future meeting with an update on where that stands, but um, we are, you know, we have, as, as we indicated to the resident that came in, um, we have 
come up with some possible solutions. We are exploring those at this point. Um, I can't say you know how that will come down in the end, but ultimately that will be a decision by um, town manager if he wants to present that to council. Um, with town code changes, unfortunately, they had just gone through a, a change to the property maintenance ordinance within the last year, which is an involved process. It has to go through um, a lot of steps and has to be ultimately approved by town council. If we were to go that route, the same thing would have to occur. Um, so before he takes it to them, he wants to, you know, do a little bit more thinking about it and some research as to, you know, if this is a, a, a direction he wants to take. So I expect to come back with you, uh, back to you with an update at some point in the future as soon as I can, you know, talk with him a little bit more and figure out where we want to go. But um, we have made efforts to, to try and, you know, at least have the conversation to see if there's anything else that can be done to help um, property owners that fall into this situation. Okay, thank you, Darren. Um, and uh, we have no correspondence this month, so it looks like we are looking for a motion to for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Fantastic. Thank you guys and welcome Ruth.